the video. Oh, there we go. It's started. We all should be here. Uh, or else. Okay. Okay, I'll call this house to order. Yes, yes. When? When? Yeah. In order. I'm restarted. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Let it run. Let it run. Okay. Yeah, from the beginning. No, from the beginning. It's my summer. Yeah, it's still fine. Okay, uh, call this house to order. Um, the motion for the day is this house believes that the feminist movement has failed their cause. Without further ado, I would like to call the opening, uh, the Prime Minister to start the debate. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I'm going to start by just briefly uh, just putting the motion in context and then I'll start with my White House and my Madam Speaker. What we are going to be talking about today, we are just basically talking about organizations that have actually been organized or that have actually been created to actually be guided and promote the interests of women with the view of actually trying to change societal perception when it comes to how women have been viewed for quite some time and actually trying to advance the interests of women, basically. And we actually believe that <coughs> these organizations have actually failed. Ladies and gentlemen, may I make it known to this house that we are not going to be arguing or debating as to how many policies that they actually have brought that protected women, how many, how many women have they actually saved from any abuse or whatnot, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be debating about how the way in which they actually structure is actually deficient for them to actually achieve their set course. Among other things that they actually have said is that they have to promote uh, the, the, the number or the access of women in positions of leadership, they have to promote better or advance or enhance the societal perception when it comes to women, they have to advocate for women's rights, including sexual rights, and all those legitimate and also for advocacy of policy that actually affect women. Ladies and gentlemen, what we want to actually understand and what we actually make, what to make known to the South, what these guys are actually trying to achieve is actually having gender equality, not gender equity. And that we have a problem. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. When it comes to gender equality, it's something that we cannot do anything about that women can actually be equals of men in any way. This comes in forms of masculinity, feeling capacity, and we both know that we are different species can never keep yeah, yeah. But instead of them promoting for gender equity where we actually have laws and opportunities being availed to all irrespective of their own genders, they've actually achieved or men may, may actually uh, vested all their efforts into gender equality. And we believe that this has actually frustrated all their efforts when it comes to that. But over and above all, still going to as I'm still going into my case, what we need to understand is that these these organizations sit down on the game for the for the next few minutes. These organizations have come up with the definition of what makes a real woman, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to show you how this is problematic and has ostracized a lot of women, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, they think that a real woman is the one that can actually exist without a man, the one who's actually an advocate, who is rich, and who can actually do on their own. And that's what they're actually pushing for, ladies and gentlemen. And that's not what men are all about. Men are not about uh, not existing without women or being advocates. That's not what we want. But we actually think that what this, as part of their definition, is actually problematic and is actually making them fail their causes. That it's ostracizing most women in the first place. Second, first of all, most women are illiterate in Africa, ladies and gentlemen, and they cannot be rich, and they actually don't want to exist without names. They actually want to be loved, and they want to love all these babies. Yeah. So it means that they cannot have been carried through through these organizations. So they actually quite precise. And this actually leads me to the next point of that. These organizations are actually led by rich and divorced women who are actually independent, ladies and gentlemen, who actually spend more time drinking cupcakes and eating yeah, yeah. coffee, ladies and gentlemen. And we feel that these people cannot connect to the women that actually in Gandhi, in Trump, in Trump, in Trump, in Nadia's home. They cannot carry the interests of those because they are elitistic religion. This is the same war that is failing when it comes to gay marches and gay parades, religion, because they are elitistic and therefore they have ostracized the greater majority. Therefore, they cannot actually encompass or carry the interests of all the women. Moreover, we want to argue and say, because of this definition of them trying to actually paint a certain women that they actually want in this vocal, big, muscular women, ladies and gentlemen, they have actually failed to even try and uh, acknowledge the limitations of women. For instance, right now, we may actually expect men and women to actually have the same roles, ladies and gentlemen. We think that that is actually against the balance of nature. The masculinity is natural as we 
we all know, it's not that we cannot define or defend ladies and gentlemen, because it comes with names for the most part of things. So even when it comes to jobs, we've actually advocated for jobs that we know that dehumanize women because of their nature, ladies and gentlemen. And also, we want to argue and say that because of this definition of they as reasons, they are not inclusive, therefore their cause ultimately is failing. Because they are ostracized, because they are atheistic, their cause is failing. Because of this definition, ladies and gentlemen, some women still remain left out. And also, we want to say that this definition is actually cohesive to women because it means when you are not part of that definition that sets out, then you're not the real woman that you actually want to be. So it means that women even don't want to be equal of their men that act like that, actually want them to actually be the single, cannot actually opt out of this because they don't want to be actually seen not being the so-called real women that these organizations are actually talking about. And also, we want to argue and say these organizations have actually reduced and undermined the rules of women, which is what has always gained women respect. They take it that when you are cleaning and cooking up for a man, when they are cleaning and cooking up for a man, how many minutes does still have to? Okay, thank you. When you they think that when you are cleaning and cooking up for your man and taking care of your children, you are actually left out the subject. And we think that that is actually counter the cause because this is what has made women who actually take pride in that. Women actually love that. Women, because of tradition, who actually have taken to actually to choose that because they are not career women that these ladies, these women really want for them to be actually undermine ultimately, and therefore this means that for the greater good of the greater society, they cannot be carried on board when it comes to these things. And also, we believe that they are actually sensationalized domestic violence. These organizations have actually meant that when a woman is domestically violated, they have to go for divorce. This, we believe, has actually destroyed the feminist structure into the African context because now they say, when he raises the hand, he doesn't love you. But in our traditional society, we know, even everywhere, that a marriage is not a bed of roses, all these actually happen, and they're still trying to fight gender violence. But when the absence of these um, gender movements, listen, we have seen more women opting out to be persuaded to go for divorce, and ultimately remaining idle and being single forever. And also, the composition of the, 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 the movements of these organizations are these ugly, rich women with beards who cannot even get men in the first place to actually try to take out their frustrations and many nations because of this. And we also think that this is actually the ultimate thing we say that these organizations ultimately because of their structures that are not inclusive, ultimately because of the lot of material that has been well articulated by the stuff that you can't deal with. <laughs> So the an incumbent obligation upon their relationship is that they have to prove to us that the way in which these movements have shaped their discourse is this helping them achieve the mandate or they are not. I can see how it's very far in control. <laughs> So we thank the Prime Minister, we call the Leader of Opposition, to respond. are made to 
Spiegel zu sehen, wenn es um die Welt ist, Madam Speaker, they exclude other people, Madam Speaker. Talking about women, like he gave an example, women who are in Africa, women who, ladies and gentlemen, are in the boat areas, Madam Speaker. We fail to, we fail to, and what we fail to understand, Madam Speaker, is this whole notion because the main behind this feminist movement, Madam Speaker, is actually going to be divided into, um, Three or four aspects, Madam Speaker, that is what we're going to go for, Madam Speaker, in this debate. So this is what we're going to talk about his Madam Speaker. We're simply going to give you the mandate in which this feminist movement, Madam Speaker, actually formed on that base, Madam Speaker. We're going to talk about the reproductive rights, uh, domestic violence, maternity, equality, payment, sexual harassment, and of course, women's image, Madam Speaker. But this is how I'm going to talk about, Madam Speaker, about this uh, feminist movement, mainly. First of all, I want to talk to and gentlemen about the political rights. So, what we had in 1883, Madam Speaker, in Finland, women were not allowed to vote, Madam Speaker. So, it was the mandate of this um, feminist movement, Madam Speaker, to show you that the ideologies or the perception in this society, Madam Speaker, actually perceive women, Madam Speaker, actually changes. In that case, in gentlemen, in 1883 in Finland, the feminist movement within Finland, actually, ladies and gentlemen, went okay. on to place with the government, Madam Speaker, actually gaining, gaging other support from Britain feminist movement, Madam Speaker, which actually in general, in healthy, made the government of Finland, ladies and gentlemen, actually change the law, ladies and gentlemen, which actually, um, actually, Ex uh, excluded women from voting and of course occupying those dignified uh, positions in office. Sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm simply trying to say in today's debate is that we cannot measure the failure of the structure, the failure of an organization rather by its structure. Rather we should look onto the mandate. So, by some means, we can have proven it to the heart that the mandate in which this society or this organization were formed, ladies and gentlemen, it is far being, um, it, it is far under present, Madam Speaker, as far as deliberation is concerned, Madam Speaker. So, sit down. Second of all, Madam Speaker, I'm going to talk about the issue of quota in parliament or women's quota in parliament. It is a perception, Madam Speaker, that was given out by this movement, Madam Speaker, to say that it is high time women are actually given a higher chance in actually being active in politics, Madam Speaker. We see nowadays, Madam Speaker, people in African countries, Madam Speaker, which are said to be traditionally or fundamentally ladies and gentlemen, will want to vote women president, Madam Speaker. It shows that the perceptions, Madam Speaker, have been changed thanks to this feminist uh, movement, Madam Speaker. I'll take you, Bruce. So that you think that these gender quotas, because these women don't actually compete for most this is already existing societal perception of fortunate. I mean, I don't understand Bruce. What do you mean they don't compete? Because Madam Speaker, when you talk about voting, Madam Speaker, people have to vote. So competition is that these people, Madam Speaker, have to go and campaign ladies and gentlemen to actually for them to actually go and, and occupy that particular position. So I don't actually understand what is Bruce advancing into this debate, Madam Speaker. So second of all, Madam Speaker, I'm gonna talk about the economic rights that if, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that in the past, Madam Speaker, we used to know that women were not allowed to acquire rooms without an advancement or in, without, ladies and gentlemen, the support of a man. But with this help of this feminist movement, Madam Speaker, we see nowadays that women are becoming financially independent because of this feminist movement because the perception has changed, Madam Speaker, and that perception inherently changes the law or the framework in which, ladies and gentlemen, the government actually make or actually deal with these women and men, ladies and gentlemen. To talk about the issue, ladies and gentlemen, of economic independence, I'm also going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, the political part of it, because now that women are given the chance of working, Madam Speaker, we see, ladies and gentlemen, these women, ladies and gentlemen, in can have financial independence, which is in can actually, ladies and gentlemen, sit down, sit down, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this, in, in this financial independence actually um, can go on to, to help women that are, in, that are independent or single women that actually take care of their family's parents here. So this is what we should be talking about. It's not that, ladies and gentlemen, the structure in which this feminist ladies and gentlemen movement are actually formed, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem. But ladies and gentlemen, and even all the problems that to be pointed into this debate, it has to be about the main issue. Then we have actually rebooted that kind of um, our taking. And then that is the last point of the mission. If at all women were not voting before, and now they have the platform to vote, it means that this movement has achieved their money. Yeah, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, we measure the success of an organization based on the mandate it actually put for ladies and gentlemen. We cannot measure the success of that particular movement on the strategy because at the end of the day, it is the mandate that is going to be delivered to the people. So, I think your point of information has been answered, ladies and gentlemen. So, what I'm writing into this debate, Madam Speaker, I feel like what Bruce has actually brought into this debate is not what is really this debate is supposed to be about, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot talk about the structure that this movement, Madam Speaker, has been made about, that means that being made of rich women, ladies and gentlemen, 
But it is not true because the message of the judgment is being delivered to the people, so we cannot judge the, uh, the, 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 the failure of this organization into gentlemen basing on that structure. Rather, we should look onto the uh, onto this onto the mandate that, that they actually put for the men So what we have done in today's debate, men and people, is proving that women's suffrage, ladies and gentlemen, has been solved over the years because of the feminist movement, men and people. Thanks to feminist movement again, that we see women and gentlemen, single women who are raising children on their own, that are being economy that it being independent as far as our economy is concerned, Madam Speaker. So we should not be seen gentlemen by any hardest gentlemen discredit the work that has been done over the years by this feminist movement, Madam Speaker. So we put it in gentlemen what we actually have from the government, Madam Speaker, is to the organs of life. And in that regard, Madam Speaker, we shall rest our case as the first proposition. Thank you. We thank the leader of opposition, Mukhova the Deputy Prime Minister, to advance the case of opening government. Board. Yes. Right. Mm. Madam Speaker, good afternoon. We have a problem with the way the feminist movement has shaped the back of this cause in a way that we think A undermines women, that we think it puts women at a much greater uh, risk, ladies and gentlemen, and more importantly, that we think we make this movement by themselves still dominating the speaking. We think at the very heart of this lies the structure of the feminist movement because it determines whether they'll be able to fulfill their mandate or not, Mr. Speaker, which is what we bring to you. So, in my case, as mentioned to my partner, I'm going to just be telling you that these movements are currently politicized and why they're bad, Mr. Speaker, and yes, undermine yes, all that influence that they have on the social discourse. But moreover, that, Mr. Speaker, through the, uh, through the the promotion of uh, affirmative action, Mr. Speaker, the system of quotas that these guys would like to have. How we think they promote tokenism and what we think this is tenacious, most importantly, towards women. But firstly, a couple of rebuttals of community segments. This is going through. Firstly, we've thrown a couple of examples of where we think feminist movement has put work for women. They gave an example of Finland, they gave an example of Great Britain. We think that if they do that, Mr. Speaker, what they require us to do is to bring a case of where they have not worked. They yeah, yeah. And therefore, this debate will be about examples. Where I point an example where it has not worked, when he points an example where it is not worked, Mr. Speaker. We think that this is bad. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, we think that in other countries, we even have, uh, in other countries, we even have uh, women having in other countries, we even have women not enjoying political rights that being hard to be at that as much as they will try to have you live. And examples being in the other segment, and we get to more in this and that. Then they tell you about the idea of marital power, that they believe that a uh, feminist movement has managed to destroy the segment. Firstly, this is wrong. In Botswana, this was abolished by the government. The, yeah. government. the yeah. fact that women can go and get moved by themselves. But even if so, ladies and gentlemen, it's still false the logic that I told you, that they're pointing an example of where they think they work, ladies and gentlemen. And all I have to do is give you an example where it hasn't worked. And we tell you that it hasn't worked in most of the instances, ladies and gentlemen. But thirdly, they tell you about the system of quarters, ladies and gentlemen. It means we have to assume that affirmative action is true, which we don't, Mr. Speaker. We think that most of the people who get picked by this quarter system are the rich people. And again, yeah. it doesn't appeal to the average women who own the street, ladies and gentlemen, that want an affirmative that the feminist movement to be related to them. Now that that case is done, let's get on to what we've been told, ladies and gentlemen. My partner may be clear that we have a problem with the way feminist movement define what it means to be a woman in yeah. segment, yeah. and that we have a problem with the way they're structured. He told you that the way they define what a strong woman is, they define that to be an arrogant woman who shows masculinity and who bullies around women and wants to be independent of men, ladies and gentlemen. We say that because of this way of definition of what it means to be a woman, ladies and gentlemen, they've shaped this cause okay. in a way that not only kills, uh, undermines women, ladies and gentlemen, but also makes it harder for us to solve the problem. But at the very heart of this, we tell you that, ladies and gentlemen, it causes a war between a man and a, wo a, man and a woman, ladies and gentlemen. Because what he tells this woman is that you you can be arrogant against your men, you can be dominate your men, ladies and gentlemen, and instead of being uh, remanding equity, you can demand equality, ladies and gentlemen. And you think that this is the reason why we have even more uh, 
uh, gender-based violence in general because we have women trying to fight men and men fighting back. And because inherently men are biologically stronger than project men, they tend to beat women more. And we don't we see that we aren't solving anything at the end of the day. They've also told you that because of that definition of what it means to be strong women, they've been able to exclude certain types of women from segment. Women who like to vote for their men, women who yeah, like to be yeah, 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 they're yeah. still ostracized and excluded by this. So we think that for the large majority of women in Germany, that this movement are supposed to be appealing to and to be working towards the Germany, that actually ostracized them and excluded them. Yeah. Now, how am I going to explain my partner? I'm going to be talking about these two points the fact that they are politicized and the fact that they are advocates to talk about the military Germany. But firstly, politicization, ladies and gentlemen. We hear you that whenever you are fighting for certain rights, like rights of women, or rights of children, or even human rights, ladies and gentlemen, you need to argue for them from an objective point of view, ladies and gentlemen. But what is wrong with politicization? We hear you that politicization means that your success is only predicated on your ability to align with a strong political uh, important uh, person, ladies and gentlemen. We hear you that we need to appeal to the power broker within politics of a society in order to be ladies and gentlemen. Our concession is that, that shouldn't be the way we determine um, women's rights in this segment. We think that women's rights and women's violence are objective things that need to be uh, supported by government throughout the rest of the world in this segment. We contrast this with an example of how we represent and other children's rights in this segment. Children's rights, such as preventing infidelity in this segment, protecting them in cases where they can't protect things, these things are endorsed by government and they're even endorsed by UNICEF in this segment from an objective set of points that doesn't need to be politicized in this segment. Yeah. But the problem with women right, and especially feminist movement, is that they seek political alliance with women in order to fight for women's rights. And we think this is bad, because not only does it mean that women's rights are only attached to certain politics in Germany, but it also puts the fate of success on those politics in Germany. Yeah. But even the sad thing is that they have often aligned themselves with opposition parties in Germany. This is even much more detrimental, because in most of the cases, opposition are the most ridiculous people, which most of the people don't even want to buy into. If you get the cases of Hosanna, they are aligning themselves with BCP. Chances are that they are never going to win a cause against like BCP. And because of that, they will never successfully make the judgment in gaining empowerment as they would like to have even more. Yes, sir. Are you saying all feminist movements attend themselves to political parties? Well, obviously we cannot be an absolute and say all, but I can tell you that a substantial number of them from country to country do use that variable, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a bigger part of their people. But more pernicious to the second point that I give to you is the idea of populism is bigger. Because we tell you that feminist movement at the very heart of them want affirmative action. They want women to be teleported into senior positions. They want women to be given free positions within parliament and all of that. But why is this bad, ladies and gentlemen? Which is that this is bad, particularly in a society that already doesn't see women as strong, ladies and gentlemen. Because this says that a woman is only as strong as being given opportunity that he otherwise can never end in shame. We think that this is bad. We point to an example of, of, of like India, ladies and gentlemen, when you had a woman who was even a president, Indira Gandhi. We think it's much repugnant and ironic that India is the most misogynistic country that even violates the rights of women, ladies and gentlemen. And this is because of the societal protection that is there views Indira Gandhi as that woman who was teleported into a position of power, ladies and gentlemen. And therefore, they don't attach, the, they don't. They don't express the fact that a woman can work hard for themselves in as much as men can work for themselves. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we tell you that the way feminist movement has defined what is due to be a woman, ladies and gentlemen, is dangerous in spite of this war. It has caused the war between men and hence it's hard for us to empower men. But more importantly, it is clear the most fundamental women that we need to be But moving about, we tell you that politicization and tokenism have undermined all the current efforts that they're trying to do, and we don't think that they'll ever win, instead they'll continue to fail. Yeah. We thank the Deputy Prime Minister, who called the Deputy Leader of Opposition, to respond. Yes, um. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In today's debate, we do not believe that if you have achieved your mandate at the end of the day, how you have achieved it has to matter in today's debate. We have a problem with the government in today's debate because they have a problem with the way in which feminist movements are being structured at the end of the day. So that is why they totally feel that feminist movements have failed. Now, Madam Speaker, 
We believe that even if you have a woman who is been divorced and who is rich at the top of the feminist movement, as long as at the end of the day women are being liberated from the oppression by men, we do not feel that the, the social uh, discourse has been undermined in any way. Now, Madam Speaker, before I can move on into this debate, allow me at this point in time to clarify with a few ideas that came from the opening government. Now, Madam Speaker, they believe that feminist movements have failed because they've been politicized and have aligned themselves with giant political movements. We will have two couple of responses to this. First of all, we do not believe that it is very wrong for you to align yourself with someone whose mandate is more similar to yours. We need to understand that political parties, when they run for elections, they will tell you that they will do, they are going to promote women empowerment once they are elected. Therefore, we do not feel that feminist movements who advocate for rights of women have, have a problem when it comes to aligning themselves with such movements, Madam Speaker. On the second level, it still regards to the issue of politicization uh, of uh, feminist movements. We will tell you that even if women who support VCP uh, uh, align themselves with uh, a feminist movement, Madam Speaker, but VCP is in power, and VCP will only endorse movements who are led by women who assign themselves with VCP, we will tell you this. Once the policy has been passed in Parliament, that policy will apply to all women. It will not only apply to women who uh, uh, align themselves with VCP. So we feel that the issue of politicization of feminist movements should not stand in today's debate. Sit down, gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the last issue or the last rebuttal of societal discourse, which will come about when we pay a woman to be this giant, strong, muscular uh, 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 object at the end of the day. We will tell you that. They have misinterpreted this, Madam Speaker, because we need to understand that. It means that women also have to have a fair chance when it comes to taking certain decisions with regards to the feminist, Madam Speaker. Therefore, we do not feel that if you pay a woman who is muscular, it will show you that woman, Madam Speaker, her voice is not silent or not docile, Madam Speaker, at the end of the day. It will tell you that this is the woman who moves her right. This is the woman who stands up for what she believes in. Yes. It does not necessarily uh, have to mean that the woman will have to undermine a man in a marriage, Madam Speaker. Then what do we say about men who undermine women, but at the end of the day, we still pay people men with lighter beer, Madam Speaker. Therefore, we feel that point does not stand into this debate, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, allow me to move on to my case extension and Before give you a brief recapitulation on what Nale has proposed in today's debate, Madam Speaker. Nale has basically two points of contention which we think clash directly with the opening government. He came here and talked to you about the issue of politics, about the, the significance of women in politics. They are trying to ridicule that by saying we have advanced an example. We will tell you that when a law, uh, a law uh, procludes uh, the, the, the depression or the oppression of women when it comes to voting rights, Madam Speaker, we also, we, at the end of the day, we will have to cite an example where women were allowed to vote, Madam Speaker. But what matters the most is, do women have the right when it comes to voting? That is the question well, part in this debate, not whether a woman has voted in women. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we feel that the government has misinterpreted that. But before I move on, I'll take you, Bruce. You understand that what you said is that this structure excludes the masses like your appointment and everything else. Can you debate that and stop trying to your own definition? Madam Speaker, the structure precludes the masses or the structure excludes the masses. We will tell you that a structure, we cannot all be involved in the running of the structure. That is a fallacy on its own. But if at the end of the day the structure that was directed appealed to the masses, but it uh, liberates women's rights from the oppression that we see in the status quo, we will feel that we are heavily content with that particular structure. Speaker. Now moving on to the issue of sexual rights. We need to understand that it is within the mandate of feminist movement, Madam Speaker, to advocate for women's rights when it comes to sexual issues. We will tell you that by emphasis on birth control movement, argued that women should have control over their reproduction and the movement is closely tied to a feminist movement. Mm -hmm. We will tell you that such movements disapprove the oppression of women when it comes to hating sex. That is why they had slogans such as control over our body. This slogan to totally discredit the dominance that men have over women when it comes to sexual issues. And this happens because of the influence, the societal pressure that feminist movements have put on men such as this and the opening government for the speaker who will at the end of the day oppress sexual rights of women by saying that Madam Speaker to face the women to be this giant warrior we are disclosing or rather we are a de 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 we are degrading the whole purpose at the end of the day Madam Speaker. We will tell you that in India a girl was raped 
by a gang of men. But because of feminist movement and influence, the society was able to discredit such kind of ex Madam Speaker. We will tell you that if feminist movements were well, not as active as we believe they are as the opposition, the society would have been fine with that. They would have told that, yes, she's she doesn't have sexual rights. But because of feminist movement influence, society, <laughs> societal perception has been changed. Society was able to uh, disapprove of such kind of ex Madam Speaker. So at the end of the day, we will tell you that it was a and they that has been met with ties beautifully with the feminist yes, movement yes. because sexual rights have been upheld, Madam Speaker, in our country. Now, Madam Speaker, go to the last point of extension. Yes. We are going to talk to you about the issue of societal rights of women yes. when it comes to this feminist movement. We will tell you that, Madam Speaker, societal pressure and your societal perception towards women in the society itself has changed since the, uh, the, the feminist movement has been inserted, Madam Speaker. The society perceives you perceive rather women as this weak and docile character in the society. But because of the pressure that came from feminist movements by telling you that, hey, a woman is not free. Water. Women have rights also. Women have the capacity to do certain jobs, Madam Speaker, because at the end of the day, the issue should not be about gender. They came here and talked about the issue that we put, uh, we dehumanize women when we put them in certain jobs, Madam Speaker, jobs that have been a mechanic, for example. We will tell you that if a woman, that is example, Bruce, so Relax. I'm not in any way contradicting you, but I'm crushing you. So let me see. We will tell you that if a vacancy for a mechanic is being applied, but the women have the capacity and the know-how to be a mechanic, yeah. why shouldn't he apply for the post only because he has breast and I only have to apply for that particular post because I have a dick at the end of the day, but I'm sick. Yeah, we will tell you that because of the pressure that feminist movement has been able to inflict in the society, at the end of the day, a woman can become a mechanic because she has the capacity to do the job. Not only because, Madam Speaker, at the end of the day, she has bread. What are we showing you today, debate and opposition? We are showing you that it is within the mandate that we need to discredit the success of the feminist movement. All your mind is just to do Thank you. That was the end of the first half of today's debate session. To open up the second half, I call the member of government to attend on government. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. The very existence of feminist movements endorses the barbaric perception that women are objects of fragility and weakness and require special treatment to rise the reins of men. Yeah. What the opening government has told you is that the feminist movement has failed in terms of structure. What we're going to tell you is that the feminist movement has failed in terms of their very existence. Before I go into that, we're going to look at some points of the question. There was this India example that was given and of how feminist movements urge societal acceptance. What we would tell you, especially in cases of India, is that India is such a patriarchal system that women could not rise alone. The only reason societal acceptance was urged was because men accepted that there was a wrong that was done. And men themselves, with women, pioneered this um, uh, 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 sort of uh, refusal of continuance of such things. Now, what we would tell you from this very example is that if there is no cohesion, like they've shown you, then there is no way that these things can continue to happen. As long as women demand and don't ask, they're all going to ostracize the other party, and this will lead to a continued fight that is never going to end. The second point we want to uh, rebut is this whole issue of quotas. What we can tell you is that the fact that quotas don't take into consideration women who don't care for women's rights and men who do care for women's rights, quotas only look at numbers. So even if you have 20 women in parliament that really just want to look after the rights of men, they're okay with it. We're not okay with it because feminism is about, is about ideology and isn't about numbers. The third thing we want to look at is how rights have changed over time. Now this is a bit of inter-contradiction from this side because they tell you rights have changed even though women were not represented in parliament. I'm going to tell you rights have changed by government. So if the men in parliament are changing rights for the benefit of women, then there is no need for the existence of the feminist movement. Then it means that the feminist movement has done nothing because it's the government that changes the policy. What we're going to do for you in today's debate is split the feminist movement into the three major categories. We're going to look at liberal feminists, we're going to look at radical feminists, 
and we're going to look at market failure. And we're going to tell you how each category has failed according to our structure. But we're going to take it a step further and show you that not only have they failed, they've actually gone overboard and they've worsened the plight of women. Radical feminism. Now, radical feminists are feminists that look for absolute equality. They believe that sex is a form of oppression. They believe that in anything and anywhere, women and men should be on the same level no matter what. Now, we have two problems with this. Because when you employ this kind of approach to people who are used to being in power being men, what you do essentially is you embitter the men because the men feel blamed for women's problems. The men feel like they are being victimized. And when you victimize someone, as is the psychology of people, that person will always retaliate not positively, but negatively, and retaliate with non exception. Now, we believe that this shows us a failure from the feminist movement side by not taking into consideration the manner in which they should carry out whatever it is they want to carry out. The second thing we have is this demand approach they have. This is still under radical feminism. Radical feminists don't believe in asking. They believe that you should just walk into wherever you want and ask and tell the, the, the person you want it from that, look, we want this, we want it yesterday, if you don't give it to us, we're going to withdraw sexual rights for a period of a month, and that's the way it's going to be. Now, this demand approach has never worked anywhere in societal discourse. It's never worked when I want to borrow Bruce's phone, and it will never continue to work between women and men, especially when you're dealing with a temperamental issue of people who are used to being in power and people who are used to being oppressed. Because in order to change a balance of power, the first thing you need to do is make sure the empowered party understands the need for that balance of power to change, not only that the balance of power should change. Yeah. Liberal feminists, mm -hmm. we believe we're liberal feminists who largely go for equal opportunity and freedom have also failed. Because a lot of the time liberal feminists are feminist groups that are based in cities, they're feminist, feminist groups that are based in large towns and so forth. Now we believe the largest amount of women oppression occurs in rural villages. And in rural villages is where you will find women oppressed. Is where you will find the man waking up, going to work in the morning, coming home, wanting food, telling the woman you should cook, telling the woman you should look after children, so on and so forth. We believe that if at all the liberal feminists wanted to change the views of society, into views of freedom of opportunity, into views of freedom um, of, of these freedoms, what they needed to do was start their approach in rural villages. They've never even been to rural villages. And we have a problem with this. We have a problem with the fact that they focus their area in a place where people are already able for themselves to demand these things, where women go to school and are able to demand from men whatever it is they want. They have not looked at the fragile in society. They have not looked at the most vulnerable women, and we believe because of that, they have failed. The Marxist feminists believe in equality in terms of economy and economic um, 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 diversity and so on and so forth. Now, we believe the Marxist feminists have failed in a similar way to the liberal feminists. Because the Marxist feminists have said that because we, men control all the resources, we need to have a shift in power and make sure that someone else controls resources and that women should start controlling resources. Now, we believe this falls into two phases. The demand category we've already told you about and the fact that they only focus within big cities. The biggest thing we're telling you today is based under this first level of analysis is that there's a divergence of feminist points. There's a divergence of feminist groups. And each one cannot each be put one. under the same umbrella. We will tell you that I'll take you a Okay, um D. Speaking of the demand issue, we'll tell you that some of groups are the ones who actually lobby the government to change If you remove them from the equation, then what do you have to talk to the women? The burden they need to prove in order for their point to succeed is that there's an actual causal link between the lobbying of feminist groups and the changing of laws. Until they can prove that it's because there was lobbying that the law has changed, then we don't think they will that point. Because we can give you a number of laws that have been changed without the lobbying of anyone for anything, and we don't think that point to stand in the same way. But we will tell you that the feminist movement, on our second point in that, has worsened the plight of women. What the feminist movement has done is it has moved men into a point of immediate defense. Men feel like they need to defend themselves against women, and men feel like they need to keep their power in order to continue to suppress these women who want to overpower them. We believe the strategy employed by the feminist movement has been wrong, and we don't believe that the feminist movement has passed. But also the second thing is the fallacy of incredibility. 
We believe that women, because they've been demanding and because they wanted to be given the tokenism that they mentioned, in society, people don't respect women who have been successful. That means women who aren't successful don't have role models. That means that within society, the disrespect is true, and um, 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 we also have a problem with that. Like we told you, it's not because the feminist movement has gone about things the wrong way solely. It's because the feminist movement exists. That's why the feminist movement has failed. Can I
the categorization that was provided by closing government. He said some are radical, some are liberal, and some are Marxist. We know that when we dis- when we talk about movements that are radical, these are the movements that should not be taken into account and not be allowed hey. because of that radical way of actually trying to oppose issues. Now we're going to come to that root the debate of the day in Africa. Which is, we need to actually focus on the many that are given to with, that are, that is a form of feminist movement. Yes sir. Sir, so, can you explain to the house, like you said that in our case, that these people are not inclusive and because of their structure, inherently, they are men. Yes. When we are looking at the women, they say that these structures actually define women, the women that they want to be as people who are single, who are independent, and they want to destroy feminist structures. We will tell you that at the end of the day, most feminist women, if not all, actually endeavor to entrance the family values as a husband. And if somebody finds oh. himself into a situation where the family breaks up, they actually step in and say, look, even if your family breaks up, you have to be empowered enough to be independent. And there is nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And I think that they are all headed by these four things, these three four things, and they are elitist. You cannot think that, because there are other ones that do exist that are on the ground. We see the pink, the pink brigade that was formed after the atrocious rape of a woman in India. That is comprised of mainly who are disadvantaged women? Where do you feel that? The society is actually yeah. stepping upon them. Yeah. They need to do yeah. something. So that categorization yeah. cannot stand at the end of the day because you are painting everybody with the same brush. You are carrying the rest of the world. And some people are deleting. No sense. Sit down. We also need to consider what needs to be done for the women, ladies and gentlemen. Women are the pillars of our society. And at the end of the day, we cannot seek to toss away feminist movements when they are the old, when they are the people that have actually taken that life into consideration. We need to actually put the anti identify the men as identified by government of feminist movements who advance the position of women in both lives. And these feminist these feminist movements actually Bone. contrary to what has been said by the government, they do do that. They do do that from a position of creating gender equity. What they seek to do inherently when we simplify it is to actually make a situation where women have equal opportunities to do that. And even if you are headed by a rich, wealthy divorcee or a poor woman or a poor, a poor married woman with eight children, there is nothing wrong with that and they need to continue serving service in the court, ladies and gentlemen. And we need to actually consider those around women in the yeah. Because by pushing the plight of gender empowerment at the end of the day, we are empowering women to actually contribute to society positively in the government. We are actually saying to this woman, stop fearing for your life, thinking that your husband will abuse you. Stop fearing for rape. But at the end of the day, raise your children into people that will actually contribute meaningfully to society. And that is something worthwhile. And that is why we feel that we cannot discount that we cannot discount feminist movement, the feminist movement, no matter what that structure may be, no matter what has been done before. They are something that exists through lobbying of governments to actually make a meaningful positive change. And that needs to continue for the betterment of society going forward. Thank you. He said the member of opposition who called the government weak to submit government case. Okay, uh, Madam Speaker, from the onset, the closing opposition could see that movements such as radical feminism need change because the way they do things, they consider that it is the one that violates uh, things like feminism. Ah, that from itself shows that they agree with the government that 
movement, feminist movement has failed. Therefore, that's why they are hoping for change okay. and all the political okay. okay. We believe that as a radical feminist, as a liberal feminist, and as Marxist market feminist, we work for one goal, mm -hmm. to make sure we empower people. But if at all, they empower women. But if at all, there's a movement within our team that they perceive is critically wrong and fake. It shows that indeed feminism has failed its cause. Now, before I can conclude, let me see, let me give you the issue that transpired today the debate. The first government came here and showed you that the structure and the way in which the feminist describes a woman is typically wrong. And in that particular instance, Mr. Speaker, we believe they have concentrated much on our first analysis, radical feminism, okay. in which they bring a situation whereby these organisms perceive a, a woman as a more arrogant yeah. and a person who is yeah. always willing to fight at all stands. Yeah. And therefore, with their limited analysis, we add more to types and clues uh, codes of feminism, liberal uh, feminism and Marxist feminism, which I'll further go on as I go into my case. That what we heard from the opening opposition is that the man, the structure doesn't count, but what counts is the money. Here's an issue. They say that because in the past women were not allowed to vote, now they are allowed to vote, then it means it's not safe. They're not looking for active participation of women in the yeah. politics. Yeah. 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 We are still fighting about particular instances. They're not looking at it. all the vote they are saying has a change, even we as women, because they say that the open government that the number that stands in front of the parliament and stuff like that, the men are those people who are taking decisions. Therefore, the vote does not have any impact. Therefore, it means in that particular they, they are not looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah. It simply shows that women, the feminist movement, yeah. has stayed. See, don't vote. Therefore, with whatever they brought forth, Mr. Speaker, we believe because what they are saying, they are opting for a limited school. For them, the fact that at the past, I did not vote now, voting is a dream come true for them. They are not looking for better and more solutions that we believe at the end of the day. Now, okay. with that thing, we feel that that case has lost, has actually lost in the debate. Now, with all those situations, I'd like to get straight to our case. But before I do that, let me take the one point during my speech. Oh, on radicalism, don't you feel that when it comes to issues such as Islam, do we, do we, should we allow jihadists, jihadists as a radical to speak for the whole of Islam? And when it comes to voting, don't you feel that in a country such as America where Obama vote was decided by women, isn't that an important thing? Well, I'll actually answer your point by taking a part where you use Islam and other radical Muslim parties by the two right. I like to say that at the end of the day, there are those organizations who fight for environmental conservation. And if you believe that within those organizations, there's an organization that you believe that then something should be done about it because it's actually creeping and contradicting the own goal of conserving uh, environment. Yeah, yeah. It shows something is wrong. Yeah, then yeah. why fix it if it's not broken? Yeah, yeah. They want to fix it because it just says. Uh, that was a waste of time when you go to my case. Well, we brought you four actually three mm, Two, two analysis by dividing feminism into three categories and so the why we believe this feminist movement has exacerbated the situation rather than helping it. Yeah. Firstly, we talked about the radical and absolute uh, feminists which was more concentrated by the opening government therefore are not moved much into it. Then, let me go straight to what we brought and most of to today's debate when we talk of liberal feminism. We argued that, firstly, these are the feminists that fight for equality, for opportunities, and freedom of the speaker. And we told you how their centralized power shows their failure, Mr. Speaker. We believe that a feminist that was the work to work for all women in the world have to have more dedicated outreach programs that will help impact on the people. In this juncture, when you ask 
and all women fight in the Bundus want to do about feminist movement, he will tell that he doesn't know a thing about that particular thing. Yeah. It shows that in that particular instance, they even fail to push their own mandate of empowering people because people don't even know what they mean by this feminist, uh, feminist kind of organization. Therefore, we believe in this feminist movement has failed. Now, as a further continue, Mr. Spiller, I'm going to show you that we are going to, uh, we are going to also to show you another yet form of uh, category of feminism to the masses. We talk about we talk about the economy and what this revolution may speak of. We yeah. still see in this situation, Mr. Speaker, where women, Mr. Speaker, feel that they are belittled, Mr. Speaker. We still see in situations whereby women are are going arrogant. Women are going, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we are not willing to be rational because of this ongoing feminist situation because because the feminist is pushing a mandate, I do not to be rational. Rather when I see my husband, the only thing I need to do is actually go out and show that I also have the responsibility to be like you. Yeah, yeah. There are often for more masculine women that actually make sure making sure that we go into See us talk that they have all the women and the men. Yeah, yeah. Now, to the last and most important part of, of, of our analysis, watch which why we believe that indeed this feminist movement has brought more harm than good. It went to a situation whereby ordinary women in the world had talked for retaliation rather than sitting up and seeing whether they are objects in the society. They gave me an often example of issue of divorce because a woman is feeling that his husband doesn't take care of a the only best thing he does is to stand up because at the end of the day the movement that is actually trying to follow his money. And most of the time we see women doing that out of their egoistic ambitions or, 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 or being a woman and actually rationalizing. <laughs> Therefore, so that particular sense we believe we deserve to win this case. Thank you. <laughs> We thank the government. We call the chief. We brought today's debate session to terminate uh, opposition case. Order on everyone. Can you please uh, maintain silence? Uh, okay. Okay. You don't have to. Okay. I throw you are speaking. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. 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 To uh, evaluate the feminist movement, to completely understand uh, which side we should take, and now be in the closing opposition. What we will do is we will address both situations, we will be based on both, uh, uh, from both points, uh, to, both, to both engage with both the opposition and the government. Ladies and gentlemen, first to my rebuttal. Uh, now, what the speaker before me has tried to move for is that. Um, Women in these feminist movements now are actually holding back because they feel that feminist movements are actually doing enough on their own. But we would tell you that that's just not true. These feminist movements are actually being made up of women. But we would tell you that the women are going to actually endorsing these feminist movements. That is why you have women in India striking on the street because of the reason. That is why you have women in Ethiopia actually uh, creating these groups where, where, where they actually have a degree, where they actually uh, uh, come together, see the women who are actually uh, been doing war, these actually help uh, and try to uh, go against women being doing war. This is why we tell you that in actual fact, it's the normal women on the street who actually water what they are having to do what a uh, uh, feminist movement it really is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today, how the entire debate has actually went off the We will tell you who have it We will tell you what is more confiding today, apart from the criteria issue, was from the government, we had the issue of better problem with the structure of the, of 
of the structure of the of these dominant movements, right? They will tell you that the, the way that these the movements actually characterize women and the way that these movements the movement actually represents women is not what a feminist movement really is all about. And yet, we will tell you that in some things, um, we will tell you that the kind of characteristics that they were doing for women are really anti. What these feminists actually push for is equality with men, uh, equality of uh, opportunity that these women rightfully deserve to have. Now, these whole examples that they gave us are actually these women having to Especially these women being having muscles and what what will tell you that having muscles and uh, being as aggressive as men will tell you that it's absolutely untrue. What these women are actually pushing for, ladies and gentlemen, are having women having the same opportunity, having women having the same months and actually achieving the same opportunity. But most importantly, having 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 the society actually accept that women can actually take these. Um, you can actually take these rules. This brings me to the point of affirmative, um, affirmative action, which is hoping that they will tell you that in actual fact, what they strive to prove for is actually so to the society that women can be able to do this. Will tell you that it allows women the opportunity to get into that position and show to the rest of the society that yes, I am capable as a woman of leading your society. We'll tell you this is where you really change the society. Uh, perception of what women, where women actually do in the Indian countryside. And that is basically the fundamental importance, that is basically the, the, the core of what a feminist movement is all about, changing the perception of the society. And it is by doing these things, by these affirmative action movements, by lobbying with government, that the, that, uh, that, uh, the feminist movement has actually achieved what our opening opposition has actually told us. First of all, how the damages party. What our opening opposition has actually told you about. It is by these mere activities that women can now vote, that women can now, women are now involved in politics, and that women actually have quite an outstanding number of economic rights equal to those of their own First one, second. Have a seat, gently. What we will tell you came from the closing of, of the government was issued, uh, was of, 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 of how they did not even actually want a permanent existence. Right. We will tell you that uh, uh, the, with the issue of the demand approach, with the issue of absolute equality, and, the, and, and how actually some of these women groups um, lead for equal opportunity. And then we had this idea that we have radical feminism. What you would want to do is that in any case, we have radical for, we have radical groups of many things, of many uh, uh, situations, just like my partner gave to us in them. We tell you that it is not a small number of radical feminist groups that ultimately actually determine the whole movement in for this. We tell you that, yes, we do have them, some of them, but we cannot truly really just say because we have that one radical group or those two radical groups, then in any case, we're just going to say feminist groups are actually our uh, best. We'll tell you on the issue of demand approach. What the Korean government was trying to almost run off with was the issue of how in general uh, when you demand when you demand from people they actually become more important. We will tell you that it's absolutely untrue. What these feminist groups do, they actually lobby with government. Right? They actually engage with government, actually. They actually get endorsements from government. That is why you see over the past years that the feminist groups have actually succeeded in changing many issues, many burning issues such as in involving the rights of women in general. So this issue of actually had this issue of actually um, about this demand push that they have is not good for them. It's actually it actually has been working with these feminists as we really see the how their mandate has been achieved. Now what we can tell you as closing opposition is that but before then yes I have okay, a lot of duration of women who need immigration are poor, married and educated. Through the definition that they have, ladies and gentlemen, they destroy and exclude those women and only put the fate of those women to how politics play out. I would tell you that uh, what these feminists could actually want to is Okay, what we will tell you about these feminist groups and the issue of not accidentally presenting uh, the, the lower minority is that what happens with these feminist groups is that most of them actually come out from uh, women who actually uh, are from these rural backgrounds and these who are men, who are educated, and they actually form a part of these. And we will tell you that government actually look at these people. Democratic uh, governments from democratic states actually look out for these women, as they are, as I'm saying, a democratic government. So this whole issue that the government is not actually, I mean, I mean, I mean I announced is that 
the uh, these women would actually lead on to uh, gamble with people's rights and policies, there's no standing to these debates on. So what we stand in closing up to we would tell you that all of these people have and actually as like have actually succeeded as both as really alluded to to the house that the movement because the movement that these people actually want you to keep for is still standing today. We have people still striving for women uh, for other issues uh, of women inequality for um, uh, burning issues such as rape. But we've seen that women from backgrounds like the ones that we have, like the uh, the pink gang that was in that was in India, made up of rural people, is actually striving for women. Uh, women that we will tell you in the next week, the public is